welcome to Portland Civic Stadium. It's week number six in the PIL, and it's Benson and Madison. I'm Jim Schobel along with Carl Dieter, and let's go down to the 35-yard line with Dave Allen and Cal Frank to talk about tonight's ball game. All right, we are here. A bunch of exciting crowd going on along with Cal Frank. Good evening, Cal. Good evening. Exciting game tonight. Of course, this is the scene we've seen repeated before, where both these teams unbeaten coming together again. Madison and Benson tonight. Good athletes on the field, good ball players all the way down the line, and we're looking for a great ball game tonight. And let's uh, let's get the action underway. Let's take it back up to Carl and Jim. All right, thanks, Dave and Cal. And it is a key matchup tonight in the PIL for bragging rights. Both teams undefeated at five and zero. Oh. And Madison will get the football on the kickoff, and they will start at their own 22-yard line. Quarterbacking for the Madison Senators is number two, Tony Meads. He's going to run that wishbone offense. Play goes out. That's number 31, Devin Pierce, the leading scorer in the state of Oregon as far as the AAA high school football ranks go. Jim, if you don't mind me interrupting, here it is. The quarterback for Madison came up the line. I misread his number. I didn't see the one in front. That's number 12, Bill Schloss, quarterbacking the Madison offense. Madison likes to run the wishbone, and we'll have to see how the Benson defense adapts to that wishbone offense. Just underway here at Civic Stadium. Schloss with the football, pitches out. That goes to number 40 to the outside for yardage. Number 40, that's Brian Thomas. He got out there really quick, got some good yardage. Of course, Benson, every team that they've beaten this year, they've shut out. But... Carl and I were talking before the game tonight. There is the Senators' starting offense with Schloss, Southam, Pierce, Thomas, Richardson, Rondella, Neller, Jennings, Cooper, Stevens, and Patton. First and ten at the Senators' 37-yard line. Schloss goes up the middle to number 40. That's Thomas once again. And he is knocked down at the 40-yard line. Gain of about three on the play. Call it second down and seven. Tackle made by number 16, Tony Robertson for the Techman. Be really interesting to see if... I've seen other teams earlier having success going against Benson up the middle, so we'll see if Madison can capitalize on that weak inside game of Benson. Second and seven, a gain of three. Schloss... Out to Pierce. Pierce at the 35, to the, or rather the 50, and crosses midfield and is tackled inside Benson territory at the 45-yard line. Well, Jim, so far I'm impressed with the Madison running game. They have been running the ball at will, getting some good yardage on some sweeps and everything else. Madison on three plays has gone from their own 22 to the Benson 45. Getting two first downs. You see the quarterback and that wishbone offense. Hannibus in the back. That's Devin Pierce. Pierce gets maybe four on the play. So there you see Pierce. He's the leading scorer in the state of Oregon so far. And there's the pitch back to number 31, Devin Pierce. He got some good yardage. That was the play before last on that first down carry. Second down at six. Inside Benson. It's territory at the 41-yard line. Schloss rolls left, pitch out to Thomas. Thomas gets a first down and more and knocked out of bounds at the 22. All the way down. I don't believe this Madison offense, from what we've seen from the teams that Benson has played, nobody has moved the football this fast and this well against the Benson defense. The ball carrier on that play was number 40, Brian Thomas. The Techman defense with Brown, Ace, Robertson, Walter Bailey, Mr. All-American. Tag McSwain, Rod Hicks, David Powell, John Coriel, Greg Kayleen, Chris Tibble, and Guy Nelson, number 90. Keep an eye on Guy Nelson. He is the quick defensive end for the Benson Techman. Of course, the Techman coached by Bill Dressel at 5-0, and and the undefeated Madison Senators coached by Larry Keck. There you see the Madison sidelines and the Madison coaching staff. That's Warren Bolin in the center of your screen, the one with the emphasis on the <laughs> play. We Maybe might mention they have a good, good sized crowd here tonight at Portland Civic Stadium, an estimated crowd of between eight and nine thousand for tonight's PIL matchup. 
This game not only has significant bearings in the PIL, Benson is ranked seventh right now in the state, and Madison is not far behind at 13th. So a win here could propel one of the teams well into the top 10. And then a win or a loss for Benson could very well take them out of the top 10. First and 10 at the 23-yard line. Senators go up the middle again. I believe that's Devin Pierce at the bottom of that pile, and it is. And off to the up back that time. Pierce got the call. He got a couple. So far, the Senators with them three first downs inside the first two and a half minutes of the game. Call it second and about seven. Pierce got three on the play. Madison running the wishbone once again. Slosh pitches out. That's Pierce at his 20. Knocked down at the 15-yard line. Walter Bailey in on that stop. But, Jim, as I've said, that wishbone, when you run that wishbone on a sweep like that, you've always got two blockers in front of you, so you really don't need any pulling guards. I think Madison will have some success tonight against Benson. The matchup tonight, Benson's defense, how are they going to hold up against the wishbone, and how is the Senators' defense going to match up against Walter Bailey and Tig McSwain? Third and two at the 15-yard line. Play goes up the middle, and I believe the tech or the uh, Senators get a first down. I think that was number 42, James Richardson, on the carry. He's 5'11", 185 pounds. He's a senior this year. One of those three horsemen that Madison has in the backfield. We might mention that Ian Roach is healthy for the Benson Techman this week, and he will see some action tonight. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Madison threatening to score with 8.06 left to go in the first quarter. Play goes to Pierce, and he is pummeled to the ground by Walter Bailey and number 10, Matt Asay. Matt Asay. Asay last week with two touchdowns in Benson's 27 to nothing victory. And, of course, Madison coming off a big 28 to nothing victory. There is the Benson route record. 28 to nothing against Roosevelt, 38 against Marshall, 41 against Cleveland, 28 against Jefferson, and last week, 27 against Lincoln. Gain of four on the play, second down, and about nine. Er That's Pierce on the carry. He gets all the way down to the Benson two-yard line. On that play, it was second down and six to go. Ball being marked down at the nine-yard line. It was almost like a misdirection. Uh, the quarterback for Madison, excuse me, was Bill Schloss. Didn't seem like the play developed when he wanted it to. And at the last second, he handed it to Pierce, who got some good yardage. All the way down to the Benson two. And they're going to bring in the chains to see if Madison indeed got the first down. That, that they did. did. So that'll give Madison four shots at the Benson goal line. Madison so far has put together a very impressive opening drive with five quick first downs to take them all the way down to the Benson two-yard line. First and goal at the three. Schloss goes up the middle to Pierce. Touchdown, Madison. of action already gone it's Madison six and Benson nothing and the first time that a team has scored against the Benson Techman in PIL action for 1987 that's over 20 quarters of football and that's the first score Benson has allowed the extra point attempt is up and it is good right through the uprise, and that'll make the score with seven minutes left in the first quarter. Madison seven, and Benson nothing. There's a look at the touchdown by Pierce. No doubt about that one. So an impressive opening drive covering all of 78 yards in only five minutes. And Madison finished it off with a two-yard run by number 31, Devin Pierce. And Madison out on top, seven to nothing. 
both coaches and both teams definitely pumped up for tonight's game. This is a rivalry that has gone on for years in the PIL. Benson and Madison, they usually finish 1-2 in the PIL. That was Victor Rodella. I tell you, Carl, I thought the Greyhound races ended a few months ago. He was gone. Ninety yards on a kickoff return. There you see Kenny. That's a long run. He's going to take a breather on the <laughs> sidelines. He's going, guys, give me some oxygen, please. Get some congratulations from his teammates on a fantastic run back. Jean Blondeau, number 13, patting him on the back. There you see number 8, Irving Brown. Larry Keck is beside himself over on the Madison sidelines. Fourteen seconds gone, and Benson has come within one point. Timeout was called on the field by Madison. There you see some of the bends in the sidelines. You see Anthony Sherman, number 29. And so number 80, Ian Roach, will line up for the extra point. He is healthy this week. There's the snap, the kick, and we are tied. With just over five minutes gone here in the opening period of play, it's Benson 7 and Madison 7. We've seen an explosive offense from Madison, and you just saw a big explosion provided by Kenny Vaughn, 90 yards worth. Took the kickoff uh, after Madison's score, after a long, long, hard drive, took the kickoff and just took it right back down their throats to tie the ball game. And Kenny showed some good speed on that, breaking to the outside. Nobody had a chance at him. Let me see the Benson kickoff team. Number 80, Ian Roach, is going to do the kicking honors for Benson. And this crowd between eight and 9,000 at Civic Stadium, they're witnessing a war. Roach will kick from his own 40. Taken at the five-yard line by number 44, Bobby Frazier. Frazier, and there he is tackled by number 90, Guy Nelson. He gets all the, he gets about 20 yards on the return out to his own 24-yard line. That's where Madison will take over first and 10. Carl, you and I were talking before the ball game. You and I both are expecting this game to be a high-scoring affair. But I think we're looking at a little different outcome, Jim, and your Shovel's picks, which we will see in, 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 in their entirety at halftime. you got Benson by three. I'm going to have to go with Madison by five. We'll have to see what happens. Schloss out to Pierce, breaking to the outside, knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Gain of about five on the carry. Make it second and five from the 29. Devin Pierce, a senior this year at six foot, 186 pounds, and he is quick. There you see the Madison sidelines, the coaching staff for the Senators. Hoping to have just as quick an answer as Benson had. Gain of three on the play. Sloss going to pass. He's got a man. And oh, just got the outreach arms of number 84 for the Senators, Terry Patton. Back in coverage for Benson was number eight, Irving Brown. On that play, it looked like 
the Madison receiver had a step and a half on Mr. Brown, and it would have been off to the races. No gain on the play. Third down and seven. Not even halfway through this first period of action yet. And it looks like we're in for a barn burner, folks. There you see, we got the PIL football on Multnomah Cable Access. You can watch the game Sundays at 10 o'clock on Channel 21, Mondays at 2.30 on Channel 11, and for your East Portland viewers at 6 o'clock on Tuesday evenings on Channel 31. Slots with the completed pass to number 84, Terry Patton, but we have a penalty flag on the play. Here you see the referees discussing the play. It will be a clip against the Senators. And the guys in the radio booth from Benson High School next to us are going bananas. You know who they're rooting for. The offense refused fourth down. And the penalty wisely refused by Benson. That will force fourth down and seven. And ben, or Madison so far, that's the deepest that they've been. So it'll force the first Madison punt of the ball game. Back to receive at his own 40 is number 28, Ty McSwain. Madison calls a timeout. I think that's our second time out of the first half, which could come into play later on. Shot of the Benson sidelines. Lots of excitement. You can see the large crowd on hand here at Portland Civic Stadium. They won't have to call the fire marshal on this one. It's a good crowd, though, for a high school football game here in the city of Portland. Nice show of support for high school athletics. Back now to kick is number 88, Brad Younce for Madison. He'll be kicking from about his own 19. Snap. And the kick straight up in the air. Fielded at the 48-yard line by number that's Sherman. Sherman. He's breaking to the outside, and he's going to be off to the races. To the 10, all the way, touchdown! My, oh my! How quickly the tide turns! 51 yards, Anthony Sherman, and Benson is up 13-7. to here you see Anthony Sherman, an excited young, excited young man. It looked like Sherman was going to be knocked down at about the 50. He broke out of the pack, and he was gone. Just like our last paychecks, Carl. Definitely. <laughs> Ian Roach will be on the field to kick the extra point for Benson. There you see him, Brady. The, the snap, snap, it's fumbled, it's and it's blocked. blocked. Nonetheless, Benson still out on top, 13-7. to seven. So far, Jim... Benson's got two touchdowns on the board, and their offense hasn't set foot on the field yet. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's Benson 13 and Madison 7. And that has got to frustrate the heck out of Coach Larry Keck without Benson's offense being put on the field, as you said. They've scored two touchdowns on special teams. Madison, though, on that impressive drive with five first downs. They had the ball for five minutes and scored a touchdown. Benson hasn't even had the ball a single minute on offense, and they're up. Well, I'm sure Mr. Bill Dressel, the head coach for the Techman, is not upset with not having his offense out on the field at all, <laughs> especially being ahead by six points so early in the game. But I'm sure he'd like to see them get out there at least once during the game. Ian Roach to kick off for the Techman. Benson leading 13 to 7. Short kickoff fielded at the 22. Devin Pierce. And he gets about 10 out to the 32. So with 5 minutes and 26 seconds left to go here in the first period of action from Civic Stadium, Madison will try and score again. Keep themselves in this ball game. On their last offensive series. A clipping penalty forced them to get rid of the football, and that's how Benson scored their other six points. 
Schloss goes up the middle and to the outside. That's Thomas, gain of maybe two. I think, Jim, in order for Madison to be effective with that wishbone offense, they're going to have to go outside as opposed to clogging up the middle. That halfback option has worked very well for Madison. And it seems now they're shying away from it a little bit. It'd be interesting to see if they'll go back to it to move that football. Second down and eight, gain of two. Senators 34-yard line. They trail 13 to 7. Schloss goes up the middle. It's fumbled, and the Tech may get it. I think Guy Nelson dropped on the football. And he did. There's a turnover, a costly turnover for the Madison Senators. Guy Nelson, with that speed, jumped on the loose football. Quarterback for Madison, Schloss wanted it looked like to pull the football out of the running back's hands that he had originally given it to and by that time it was too late and it cost him guy nelson at 6 4 205 so benson at madison's 31 yard line first offensive series of the ball game ball goes to mr all-american walter bailey and he gets about four five there you see Mr. Bailey fixing the old knee pads. Joe Bushman, the quarterback for the Benson Techman, leads the PIL in touchdown passes. There you see him, number four. Ian Roach, number 80, is out on the field. He's a wide receiver for the Techman. As well as his kicking duties. Gain of five, second down at five from the 26-yard line. Benson goes with the more conventional pro set of two running backs. That's McSwain, number 28, and he gets about a yard. A little misdirection play, but number 70 for Madison. Russ Cooper was not fooled at all. That'll bring up third down and four. There's he tied McSwain. Heading back to the sidelines. Just under three minutes left to go. Bets it out on top, 13 to seven. Robertson in motion for the Techman. Bushman goes back. That's Walter Bailey with the football. Gets a block and goes to the outside. He cuts up and gets another first down. And oddly enough, with just two minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the first quarter, and with 13 points on the board, that's Benson's first first down of the ball game. Their special teams have done it so far. And a little mix up on offense, and Kenny Vaughn comes back out off the field. Benson with first down at their own, or rather, rather at the Madison 12 yard line. Bushman, Bailey up the middle. About the seven yard line. Give him five on the play. Call it second and five from the seven. Bailey looked like he wanted to cut to the outside. Nothing doing on that one. Benson trying to score again and to increase that lead. McSwain in motion. Bushman back to Bailey. And he's looking for end zone. He's Touchdown. got it. Touchdown. No. Now, wait a minute. He did not cross into the end zone. No, they call it a turnover. A costly turnover. It looked like Bailey had crossed the grain of the end zone, and he did not. So a costly turnover for Benson that gives the ball back to Madison. Number 73, Keith Barnett, somehow, someway came up with that football. So Madison will start deep in their own territory, first and 10 from their own two-yard line. Winding down the last minute or so of the first quarter here. One oh nine and County left to go. Benson out on top, 13 to 7. All kinds of movement on the line. An encroachment penalty will be called. Get the call from a 
referee. Illegal procedure against Madison. That'll move it to the one yard line. Get home! Go start! Offense! You start it up. So half the distance to the goal line. We'll make it first down and 11 now from the one. 50 seconds of counting left to go in the first quarter. It's Benson 13, Madison 7, and Madison in a little bit of trouble right now. Schloss goes up the middle to Thomas. Tackled down at the four-yard line by a mess of Benson Techman. I think that'll count down the last little bit here of the first quarter. 20 seconds left now. As Bill Schloss, the quarterback of the Senators, gets the play. Brings the team up to the huddle. And they're going to have to get the football off. Schloss goes up the middle. Now to about the 10. Tackle made by number 90, Guy Nelson. And there's the end of the first quarter of action here from Portland Civic Stadium. It's been a seesaw game, but the Mets and Techman have won the battle. After one quarter of action here at Portland Civic Stadium on the PIL scoreboard, it's the Mets and Techman 13 and the Madison Senators 7. You're watching the PIL Game of the Week on Multnomah Cable Access. At Portland Civic Stadium, one quarter of the war is already over. 20 points, be, 20 points being scored in that first quarter. Carl, why don't you run down the scoring? Well, Madison opened it on a impressive drive, a two-yard run that was finished off by Devin Pierce. The kick was good. On the resulting kickoff, Kenny Vaughn returned at 90 yards for a touchdown. That tied the ball game up. And on the next series... Benson, excuse me, got the ball back, and on the resulting punt, Anthony Sherman, number 29, took the punt back 52 yards, and that resulting kick was blocked, and so we stand at 13 to 7. Schloss will start it deep in his own territory at the 10, and I believe it's going to be another Madison penalty. Referees are conferring down there. We'll have to see what the call is. There you see the penalty flag. Here's the call. It is against Madison. Dead ball now. Outside, dude. Cost him five yards. Take it down. No time off the clock yet. Schloss back at his own five-yard line. A quick kick play. And Benson will let the ball roll. And the Senators will down the ball at the Benson 44-yard line. And that's where the Techman will go. The Techmen have only been on offense twice, Carl. Well, I think that might be a play, uh, ploy rather by the Madison coach. See if maybe he can stop the Madison offense as opposed to giving the ball to their special teams, which have so far done his team in. Both Benson touchdowns coming on special teams. One on a punt return, the other one on a kickoff return. Joe Bushman in at quarterback for the Benson Techman. On first down, goes up the middle. That's Kenny Vaughn, number 44. Good for three or four yards on the carry. He's also got the 52-yard punt return. Or, excuse me, the 90-yard kickoff return. Anthony Sherman has the punt return for Benson. Kenny Vaughn at 5'7", 185. the enormous crowd here at Portland Civic Stadium. I don't see it. An empty seat at least in the lower low. level. Gain of three on the play. Second down and seven at the Benson 47. And penalty flags. And I believe the Techman took a little too much time, and they did. Joe Bushman had about two or three more seconds. 
get rid of that football, and he would have got it off. But nonetheless, it will cost the Techman five. Delay. Offense. Second down. from Civic Stadium on Multnomah Cable Access. Bushman drops back in the pocket, goes up the middle of Vaughn, and the Senators read that play. Like yesterday's Oregonian, Jim. <laughs> it's supposed to be a delay to hopefully open up a large enough hole for Kenny Vaughn. But he lost five on the play. Give you a drum roll on that one. We got third down and about 16 to go. Bushman back. He's got trouble. He gets it off to, I believe that's Walter Bailey. No, that's Rod Hicks, number 32. And that will bring up. Kenny, are you on the front team? That'll bring up fourth down for the okay. Techman. On that last play, Bushman had a little trouble back in the pocket. There you see him being chased down by a defender. Knocked out of bounds there by number 13, Jason Armstrong. Kicking now for the Techman, number 80, Ian Roach. Rather that is number 10, Matt Asa. He gets a good punt off. Ball right around the Madison 25 and is down at the 24-yard line. So far, Madison with one turnover and Benson with one turnover. Benson lost the ball down at the two-yard line. We thought that Walter Bailey had crossed the, the grain of the end zone, but he did not. Costly turnover. It could be 20 to nothing, or 20 to seven rather, right now. But as you said, Jim Bailey coughed up the football in what appeared to be a touchdown. Nine and a half minutes left to go in the half. Benson up by six, 13 to seven. And Madison trying to run the wishbone offense and. The, Referees call a timeout. They stop the clock. Timeout to Madison. That's their last timeout of the first half, Jim. They don't have any more left. And I don't. I believe that the Benson Techman has not called a timeout yet. I don't think they have. We see some of the Benson cheerleaders enjoying the game so far, up by six points. Largest crowd by by far this year at Portland Civic Stadium to see a high school football game and a key matchup of the year. There's the head coach for the Madison Senators, Larry Keck. His other coaches include Scott Keck, Greg Schubert, Dave Gasser, Warren Boland, Gerald Schloss, and Mark Niebregal. And the coaching staff for the Benson Techno, of course, head coach Bill Dressel. His assistants are Tom Sunsery, Bill Ranta, Steve McPherson, Kim Rowland, Pat Lee, the manager, Vern Melvin, Mike Lemon, Stu McNeil, and the other manager is Kurt Smith. First and 10 at the 24-yard line for the Senators. Running a wishbone offense. Ooh. Running into a brick wall. That was number 16. I think that's Tony Robertson that met Mr. Pierce. They had a meeting of more than the minds on that play. <laughs> Apparently, the guys in the truck didn't appreciate that comment. <laughs> so, give them a gain of about three. Call it second and seven from the 27. Trying to go the option. They do. They kick it out to Pierce. And Pierce is dumped at the 32-yard line. Oh! And he flips number eight, Irving Brown, over. Not a good show of sportsmanship there. I am surprised that a unsportsmanship 
unsportsmanlike conduct call was not called on that one call. It was nothing violent, Jim. Brown was just upside down trying to make the hit after the play had been blown dead. Kind of like one of those back body drops you see on Portland Wrestling. And Mr. Pierce said, get off my back. <laughs> get over. See the Benson team going up to the... There you see the play. The play was over and... Boom! Get off my back, please. <laughs> Back to the action. The wishbone run by the Senators is stopped by the Techman. On third down, I think they maybe got a yard on the play. It'll bring up fourth down, down and the, a, about a couple. Excuse me, Jim, down there at the bottom of the piles. Again, number 31, Devin Pierce. And they'll give Madison the first down. There you see the quarterback, number 12, Bill Schloss, waiting for the play to come in from the sidelines. Schloss is a senior at six foot, 171 pounds. Bringing in the play on this occasion is number 43, John Poolsey. Bringing in the play from head coach Larry Kapp. Play goes up the middle, number 44. That is Bobby Frazier. Gets a couple on the play. Make it second and eight from the 37-yard line. After an impressive opening drive, Jim, it seems the Madison offense has slowed a little bit. I think it's the Benson defense keying in on Devin Pierce. I think that's why Madison, his last couple plays, has started to run away from Pierce, hopefully using him as a decoy. Oh, what a tackle by number 75 for the Techman. That is Matt Kulu. He's a large young man at 6'3", 235 pounds. He's a senior this year. This is his second year of varsity play. One of the big men up there on the line. And Kulu outweighs Bill Slosh by a good 50 pounds. I think Bill will think twice before he decides to take it up the middle again on the keeper. Third down and, third down and five from the 40-yard line. Pitch in the backfield. Pierce is going to throw it away. thrown to the ground by number 40 who the pass was originally intended for Brian Thomas and the Madison Senators are making this an unfriendly affair well Jim as we said before this game is going to be a war these teams have no love lost for each other they've been figuring in the top of the PIL conference for the last couple years now there you see the replay on that and boom oh, so Bushman will go from his own 28-yard line. Bushman pitches back. That is Bailey. Breaking to the outside. And out of bounds at the 31. Gain of four. Sorry, Jim. That's all right, Carl. Gain of four on the play. Call it second down and six. And the, quite a crowd up at the Mac Club tonight also. You can hear the student body from each school trying to rile each other up, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. Gain of three on the play, second down at seven at the 31-yard line. Bushman fakes and goes to Bailey. And Bailey is pummeled down at the 35-yard line. Give him four. Devin Pearson on the tackle for the Senators. Call it third and four. Walter Bailey, a high school All-American from Benson High School. It's interesting, Jimmy's a consensus All-American, but not as a running back. He was picked as a cornerback. Apparently they like him more for his defensive skills than his offensive skills. Third and three for the Techman. Pitch goes back to Bailey. Almost knocked down in the backfield. He's going to get the first down, but a penalty flag knocked down at the 31. I think that one's going to go against Benson. Number 32, Rod Hicks is shrugging his shoulders going, who me? I think that might have been a clip. I don't know. We'll have to wait. Good call, Jim. It is a clip against Benson. I'm sure Madison will take the penalty. Because Bailey did get a first down on the run. That would bring up 15 yards. 
That would move it all the way back to the 16-yard line. Remember, they marked the ball off from where the infraction occurred. So they'll spot the ball at the 16-yard line, and here right. we have the call. Yeah, clipping penalty. Offense. Third down. So that will bring up third down and 23 from the Benson 16. With five minutes left to go in the half. They lead it 13-7. to seven. So Benson on what seemed to be a good good drive. All of a sudden they're back way up into their own territory inside their own 20. Bushman. Oh, what a miscue on that one in the backfield. That one didn't work at all, Jim. In there quickly for Madison was number 55, or excuse me, 56, Andy Holmes. They spotted that play all the way, and Benson will have to kick, and this will force the Madison Senators to have excellent field position and a chance to get back in this ball game. Where's the trainer? Coach, where's the trainer? Get Matt Ace will kick from approximately his own goal line. There is the kick, and a nice kick. About a 42-yard punt. Bearcats called for at the Benson 43, taking that with number 21, Brad Southam. So Madison will take over in relatively good field position, first and 10 from the Benson 42. We'll have to see how the Madison offense operates. They've been trying to key off from Devin Pierce and run the play away from Pierce, and that has not been successful. And when they do give it to Pierce, the Benson defense reacts properly. It's the Civil War, the PIL. I'm Jim Schobel with Carl Dieter from Portland Civic Stadium on Multnomah Cable Access, and you can watch the PIL Game of the Week every Sunday night at 10 p.m. on MCTV Channel 21, Monday afternoon at 2.30 on Channel 11, and then for the East Portland viewers, a Tuesday edition beginning at 6 o'clock on Channel 31. Schloss goes up the middle. No game. Tony Robertson on the tackle. Number 72 for the Techman, George Runyon. Gain of one on the play, second down and nine with 3.40 left to go on the half. Schloss tried to, wanted to go option, couldn't get it, maybe got three on the play. The play wasn't developing fast enough for Schloss to do what he wanted to with the football. He couldn't get out there and get that option running the way it should be. Third down and six at the 38-yard line. Schloss, that little option play to Pierce, gets a little steam. He could be off to the races. He might. He's got one man to beat. That was Walter Bailey, and Bailey knocks him on his rear down at Jim about the seven yard line I don't think you're going to match Bailey's speed even if you are Devin Pierce the leading scorer in the state Bailey flew over to the sidelines Pierce had one man to beat and that was Bailey and he couldn't do it but a good solid first down run for Pierce all the way down to the Benson seven there's another replay of that Lacey McSwain not making the tackle but first Bailey and I think him and Devin Pierce had some words down there. Well, being 1-2 in the PIL, it's kind of an ego trip, Jim. <laughs> Devin Pierce is saying, you may have knocked me out of bounds, but I still lead the league in scoring. We'll see all the scoring leaders and passing leaders in the PIL coming up at halftime. And along with Schobel's picks, 2.45 left to go in the half. Benson out on top, 13-7. some of the Benson cheerleaders. And head coach Bill Russell down on the field. 
consulting with the Benson Techman. There you see the scoreboard here at Civic Stadium. This is Fort Bragging Rights in the PIL. This promises to be an exciting game. It will go down to the wire. First down at seven for the Senators. Gain of only a yard. They went to the up man. He didn't get very far. Coming up at halftime, we're going to have interviews, the league standings, the scoring leader, Shoals fix, and a whole lot more, so don't go anywhere. Second down at six for the Senators, rush to the end zone. Cut down Devin Pierce, doing a little jitterbug dance. with his second touchdown of the night. He's got one of two yards, Jim, and that one was from six yards now. And that ties up the ball game at 13 apiece. <laughs> Snapping the kick for the extra point. It is up and it is good. And the Senators take a one-point lead at 14 to 13. Pierce, the leading scorer in the state, adds eight, 12, rather 12 more points on a two-yard and a seven-yard touchdown run. And there you see the PIL scoreboard with 2:11 left to go in the first half. It's Madison 14 and Benson 13. Shot of the Madison crowd here at Civic Stadium, rooting on their Senators. They claim they're number one, but the Benson Techmen are too until the end of this ball game. It's unfortunate, Jim, in a game like this, somebody has to go away to lose her. Two eleven left to go in the half. Madison out on top, 14 to 13. Kicking off for Madison to the 13, Jason Armstrong. Taking it at the 18-yard line. That's number 52, and he did a real stupid but a real unwise thing number 52 that is Willie Parno one harm the football when he was in the grasp of the defender and if you do that 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to lose the football well fortunately Benson got away with it that time and Joe Bushman brings in the play on a little recipe card See, let's see what his recipe for offense is with 149 left to go in the first half. And I believe it's a penalty. I don't think he wanted that one. I don't think so either, Jim. All start against Benson. Take the ball back five yards. Here's, Here's the call. The dead ball. Start offense. Let's start it up. That'll bring up first and 15 at the Benson 19 yard line. 142 left to go in the half. And they trail by one, 14 to 13. <laughs> Bailey in motion for Benson. Play goes to the outside to McSwain and cutting up the middle. Getting a gain of maybe four. That's Ty McSwain. <laughs> Right back to the original line of scrimmage. There you see the Benson huddle. And Bushman gets the call in from the sidelines from Bill Dressel and the rest of the coaching staff. Under a minute to play in the first half. Benson down by one at their own 22-yard line, second down and 12. Bushman back to pass. He's got time. He's rolling to the outside. He gets the football off, and it's not caught. Ian Roach, the intended receiver, 
Ball is knocked down incomplete. That'll make it third and 12. That'll stop the clock with 40 seconds left on the ticker. Bring up third down and 12, still at the 22 yard line. 40 seconds left to go here. In the PIL Civil War. Makes Swain in motion for the Techman. Butchman goes to the backfield to Walter Bailey, getting a block. Bailey to the outside and getting out of bounds at the 31 yard line. But. He'll be about three or four yards short of the first down. Thank you, Jim. Got a little stuck with that sense there. Couldn't quite finish it. <laughs> Rather than say that he will be about five yards short of the first down. So far, Madison with seven first downs and Benson with only one. But the Bills Russell, the head coach of Benson, has got to be satisfied. His offense hasn't put any points on the board, but yet he only trails by a point. A little over half a minute to play. Matt Ace nearly blocked. And the ball takes up Benson, bounce and a roll. All the way down to the 26-yard line. So with 22 seconds left to go, Madison down, or Radisson leading rather, 14 to 13. They will get the football back again. They see number 56. That's excuse me, that's. Aaron Brazier, he has an interesting helmet. Apparently, he must have been poked in the eye or something. Maybe later on we'll get a shot of him. Or maybe he wears contact lenses like you do. There you see him right there. He has a face shield, a plexiglass shield, much like the hockey players wear to protect his eyes. Maybe he does wear contacts and just doesn't want to get poked and lose them, or maybe he has been poked and doesn't protect his eyes. A lot of the pros are going to that now, especially the interior linemen. And the clock winds down. It's been a war from the start. Benson led 13 to 7 coming into the second quarter. A seven yard touchdown run by Devin Pierce, the only difference here in the second quarter. And we are at halftime on the PIL scoreboard. It's the Madison Senators 14 and the Benson Techman 13. We're at halftime. Don't go anywhere. There was this guy, a nationally known sports hero. And then I got busted. As a result of my lust for cocaine, I bypassed high and went straight to messed up. I mean, zoom, there was no stopping. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're taking the exact same ride. A phone call could help you. It took prison to help me. Call 1-800-662-HELP. Dave Allen with Cal Frank back here. Game six halftime at Civic Stadium. An exciting game tonight. Madison and Benson both undefeated, and they've been kind of neck and neck. Uh, Madison was the first to score in the first three minutes of the game tonight, and Benson followed right behind, and then the next score was uh, 89 yards for Benson, I believe. 89-yard kickoff return, brought the ball right back, tied the ball game up. Uh, Benson also scored on a 50-yard punt return. Total yardage this half is 40 yards. Uh, Madison's got about 150 yards all on the ground. It's a good ball game, and we're about where we started with a 14-13 game, Madison's favor. All right, we're going to take a look now at some of the interviews uh, that uh, Cal and I had with the coaches before tonight's game. Let's take a look at that now. Dave Allen here, a big game tonight, game six in the PIL, Madison and Benson. And with me now is Madison coach Mary Peck, Coach Peck. This is a scene we've seen many times before, both you and Benson coming together head-to-head -head and undefeated. How do you see tonight's game? <laughs> As usual, something weird is going to happen tonight, and uh, whatever uh, that weird thing is, a winner is going to come out of it. Well, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice coaching approach. I like that. Is that the same thing you tell your uh, your players? Well, Something's going to weird's going to happen tonight. We got to make it happen for us. All right. What about Devon Pierce, the leading rusher in the PIL? What kind of action can we see from him tonight? Well, Devin Pierce is an outstanding back, and any team that he play for would get the ball in his hands a lot of times. Now, is that going to be interesting, considering that we're going to have the Benson defense to deal with? Well, 
we're going to just play our game because we have uh, three very outstanding backs. And I'm sure uh, Devin just uh, is a cog in that back backfield. If we don't have anything special uh, for uh, Devin. Uh, just whatever the defense gives us, we take. Now the playoffs are coming up to 13. You see a possibility of your invention in the playoffs. <laughs> in the title match, maybe. Well, it's a dream. You're laughing. You're laughing. That's a well, good uh, When you got 32 teams in the playoffs, uh, the, the idea that you're two teams in the same league making it, that's a long shot. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck to you tonight. Thanks for talking with it's us. It's going to be a good ball game. Okay, thanks. You bet. Here we are at tonight's ball game between the Madison Senators and the Benson Techman. I'm standing on the field with Coach Bill Dressel of the Benson Techman. Coach, how's it look for tonight's ball game? Well, we're all healthy, and I imagine Madison's healthy also, so it looks like uh, we're ready for a big game. How do you stop three horses like they have in the backfield? Uh, you just tackle a guy with the ball. <laughs> but I'll start out by uh, trying to stop the fullback first, and uh, then you got to worry about the quarterback keeping it, and then the pitch man. So we'll try to cover all three options of their triple option. The other part of the puzzle is they've got to stop you. Anything new in the plans for the Techman tonight? Not a whole bunch new. We're emphasizing some different things uh, because of their defense, but uh, we hope they have trouble stopping us tonight, right? The pass plays may be the key to tonight's ball game. Who can complete them? We think that uh, our passing game will help us tonight, definitely, right? Well, we wish the Techman good luck tonight. We hope to have an interview after the game with a winning coach. Thank you. Craig Clark. I'm the host of an exciting new program called Computers, the Future of Art. If you're interested in computers and the kind of art computers can generate, please watch us every third Thursday at 7 o'clock. We're broadcast live. We'll have exciting guests with exciting art. This is on channel 11. You can also watch us every Sunday night at 9.30 on channel 21. Remember, Computers, the Future of Art. and Carl Dieter back here at Portland Civic Stadium to score the Madison Senators 14 and Benson 13. Quickly now, let's take a look at the standings in the PIL. Madison and Benson tonight, both undefeated coming into tonight's ball game, both with records of 5 and 0. Oh. Marshall at 4 and 1, Jefferson and Wilson there at 3 and 2, Roosevelt at 2 and 3, Cleveland, Franklin and Grant at 1 and 4 and Lincoln at 0 oh and 5. The scoring leaders, Devin Pierce, there you see him for Madison, number one in the state, number one in the PIL, faltered, or followed there by Walter Bailey. Troy Thompson at third place, Matt Ace, Kurt Willis, Scott Allen, Dave Peterson, Rodney Hicks, Chet Coote, James Richardson, and Rondell Simmons. Those men in white you saw were the ones that are playing in tonight's game. The touchdown passing leaders, there you see Joe Bushman for Benson, leading with six, Jeff Thomas from Jefferson with five, Bill Mattis from Lincoln with two, along with Brian Reeve from Marshall, Tom Dobley from Wilson. The AP coaches poll week number six, Lake Ridge, number one. They thrashed Columbia last week, 55 to nothing. Canby at number two, Churchill at three, Lebanon at four, Jesuit at number five, Ashland at six, McNary at number seven, the Benson Techman at number eight, Central Catholic at number nine, and at number ten, South Medford and Ben, and Madison at number 13 in the state. Quickly, Shovel's picks for last week, four out of five for 800%.
the star pick was Benson over Lincoln by 28. The final score, real close on that one. The Techman 27 and Lincoln nothing. So far, the season record for myself on those picks, 20 for 27 for a percentage of 741. The TV game record, 4 out of 5 for 800%. This week's picks, the game you're watching right now, Madison at Benson. I'm going out on a limb and picking the Techman by 3. I know, Carl, you don't agree with that one. I'm going to go Benson by 5, Jim. Grant at Wilson. They're going to go with Wilson by 10. Jefferson at Lincoln. Jefferson, the Democrats, by 13. Franklin at Roosevelt, the Rough Riders by nine. Cleveland at Marshall, Marshall by six. And yes, the strike is over, but the regulars are not back. But I'm going to go ahead and pick the Seahawks by seven over the Lions. Our halftime stats here, yards rushing. The Senators with 149 yards. The Techman with only 35. The Senators have yet to pass the ball for any yardage. The Techman have five yards on the pass. Total yards, Madison with 149. The Benson Techman with 40. First downs, Madison with seven, Benson with one. Turnovers, the Senators with two, Benson with one. Penalty yards, two penalties for Madison, resulting in six yards. So far, Benson, three penalties for 25 yards. And the score, Madison 14 and Benson 13. Interesting, Jim. As we saw there on the statistics, Benson hardly has any yards in comparison with the Senators, and yet they've got 13 points on the board. That's the special teams, Kenny Vaughn. Number 44, running it back 50 yards. 90 yards. Or rather, 90 yards. And Anthony, Anthony Sherman, yeah, got a 52-yard <laughs> punt return, getting our special teamers mixed up here for Benson. But nonetheless, that's where the points have come from. Madison, on the other hand, has got both of their touchdowns from their all-star running back, Devin Pierce. And that is where we stand right now. Jeb Schobel and Carl Dieter bringing you the action from Portland Civic Stadium on the PIL Game of the Week. You see it every week on Multnomah Cable Access. We see the Madison cheerleaders passing down these last couple seconds before we get underway here in the second half. Madison with a one-point lead, and they're going to have to stretch that to keep Benson from getting anywhere near them. Remember, before coming into tonight's game, Benson, in 20 quarters of football, did not allow a single point to be scored against them. Inside the first five minutes, though, of this ball game, that string was broken. So Madison will kick off to open up the second half of action. Kicking off for the Senators will be number 13, Jason Armstrong. And he will kick from his own 40-yard line as we start the second half of action. Picked up by number 52 for Benson. That is Willie Parno. So Benson will take over first and 10 from their own 43-yard line. We haven't seen too much of offense coming from the Benson Techman, but their special teams has kept them in the ball game. Well, I'm sure the head coach for Benson, Mr. Bill Dressel, is satisfied either way as long as he's close. He's a happy man. First and 10 at the 42 for the Techman. Joe Bushman again still in at quarterback. Bushman goes back to pass. Goes downfield. That's Ace. Oh, he almost had the football. Good diving effort. effort. Yeah, Jim. Good diving effort by Ace, but he couldn't quite hang on to the ball when he hit the ground. Armstrong at number 84 for Madison. That was Terry Patton on the defensive coverage. Joe Bushman trying to throw for his conference leading seventh touchdown on that play. Couldn't quite get it there, though. Second and ten from the 42-yard line. Benson with two backs and two receivers. McSwain in motion. 
Bushman goes back. That's Walter Bailey. Bailey cutting to the outside. Gets a block. Cutting to the outside to the sidelines. Gets another. Breaks another tackle. We could have another touchdown, but no. He is knocked down at the 32-yard line. Walter Bailey doing a two-step over there on the far sidelines to not only avoid the tacklers, but stay in bounds. First down for the Techman. He'll spot the ball at the 34-yard line. Benson with only their second first down of the night. Madison has seven. Bushman moving his team early here. Bushman back to pass, rolls out right, looking for a receiver, and he just overthrew Matt Ace. That ball was well out of bounds. So that'll bring up second down. In the previous Benson games that we've showed you, when Benson needs some yardage, it's usually that one-two punch, Ace and Bushman, or Bushman to Walter Bailey. Well, Jim, when you have an All-American in the backfield, even though he's not an All-American running back, usually he's going to get the call when you need him most. Second down at 10 at the 34. Madison leading 14 to 13. Bushman pitches back. Bailey's going to get rid of it. Throws looking deep. Ace almost caught the football. Bad pass by Bailey. Threw into double coverage. That ball was almost picked off by number seven, Randy Baker. Fortunately for Benson, the ball fell incomplete. Ace made a good effort at trying to avoid a turnover. So that'll bring up third down for Benson. Went up high for the ball and tipped it away. They see Joe Bushman, the quarterback of the Benson Techman. On third and ten. From his own 34. Drops back in the pocket. He's looking for a receiver. Rolls out right. Gets it off. Oh, and it's intercepted. That's number seven, Randy Baker. Matt Ace, it was tipped off of his hands, tipped off of Tide McSwain's hands. That's Benson's second turnover of the evening. Costly one, too. Benson on the move. And they turn the ball over. Madison will get the ball at their own 25. A break for Larry Keck and his Senators. Jason Armstrong at quarterback for Madison. Or rather, that's number 12, Bill Schloss. Break the ball! And a massive Benson crush there. Stopping number 42 from Madison, James Richardson. Give him five on the carry. Make it second and five from the 30-yard line. Eight of five on the play. Play goes in that wishbone to Devin Pierce, and he is close, if not has a first down. I think the mark him about a yard shy, Jim. Call it third and one from the 29. Nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Benson down 14 to 13. Number 31, Devin Pierce on that last carry in the backfield with number 40, Brian Thomas, and number 42, James Richardson. They run the Madison wishbone. You see the quarterback, Bill Schlosh, for the Madison Senators. Play goes up the middle, and Madison easily gets the first down. Their eighth of the night. Handoff was to the up back, number 42, James Richardson. 5'11", 185-pound senior. And the Benson defense is going to have to bat down, close the door on Madison's wishbone, and try and snap it in half. Bill Dressel not happy with the way his Madison or his Benson team is shutting down that Madison wishbone, so he elects to call a timeout. 9.05 left to go here in the third period of play here from Civic Stadium. It's still Madison 14 and Benson 13. We'll give you the times of the PIL game of the week. You can watch the PIL game of the week every Sunday night at 10 p.m. on MCTV Channel 21, every Monday afternoon at 2.30 on Channel 11. 
And for the East Portland viewers, a special Tuesday edition at 6 p.m. on Channel 31. There you see it. It's the PIO game of the week on Multnomah Cable Access. Next week's game will be Jefferson at Madison. Madison may be six, or rather, maybe six and zero. Oh, they might be five and one. Be interesting to see, Jim. That game will be televised from Madison High School, not Civic Stadium. One of the few games we don't do here at Civic Stadium. And from what I understand, they pack a lot of people over there. To the outside to Devin Pierce, and he gets maybe a yard, if that. Got one of his legs knocked out from under him and couldn't get him back underneath him to get his momentum going again. They give him a yard on the carry, call it second down and nine. So the Senators come up to the huddle. Second and nine from the 40-yard line. Just under nine minutes to go. Play goes to Pierce. Tackle made by number 32 for the Benson Techman. That is Rod Hicks. There you see Mr. Pierce leading the state in scoring. And also the PIL. Behind him, Walter Bailey. Walter Bailey, fifth in the state. The Madison wishbone, there you see it. Oh, they switch out of the wishbone and go to a pro set. Play goes to that option play to the outside to Thomas. Benson read that play. Benson teed in on Thomas, and they stopped him. Good play by Benson. They weren't fooled at all by the switch in the middle of the set. And that'll bring up fourth down and six, and Madison will be forced to give up the football. So Benson's defense stopping Madison on one of a few rare occasions tonight. Back to kick number eight, 88, Brad Younts. McSwain, the deep back for Benson, and a long kick taken by Sherman at the 25. And they say he stepped out of bounds. Sherman a little upset with himself. He stepped out of bounds all the way back at his own 25-yard line. He wanted to run that back all the way to the end zone again. There you see Kenny Vaughn. He's got a 90-yard kickoff return under his belt. And Sherman with the other touchdown for the Techman. On the extra point attempt after Sherman's run back, it was blocked. Otherwise, we'd be all knotted up at 14. So Benson will take over first and 10 from their own 26-yard line. Bushman still a quarterback for the Techman. On first down goes to Walter Bailey. Picks the blocker. And Bailey knocked out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Gain of probably about five on the play. One of his lead blockers, number 32, you saw him running the back of the huddle with. That's Rod Hicks. Hicks a good blocker. Also does a fair amount of ball carrying, too, when Bailey's not in there. When they go to the outside to Bailey, Hicks is the lead blocker on the play, along with Matt Ace. Second down at five. Play goes to the outside to McSwain. Cuts up. And he is close to a first down. Tried to cut back against the grain a little too hard that time and slipped and fell on this turf. Benson gets another first down, only their third. Benson moving the ball here in the third quarter. And the key to Benson getting back on the scoreboard is to not turn over the football. Both Benson teams. Was, go ahead, Jim. Benson with two turnovers, Madison with two. The right out of my mouth. I was going to say, each team with two turnovers here so far. Benson with one already here in the second half. Bailey in motion. Bushman back to pass. There's Bailey. He dropped it. Pass was too high. In and out of the hands of Walter Bailey. Bailey was wide open. And that'll bring up second down for the Texans. 
Plenty of time left to go. Seven and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Still all the fourth quarter left. There you see the quarterback for the Vincent Techman, number four, Joe Bushman. Bushman goes back to pass on second down, looking for the sidelines. I think that ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure. Either that or it was a very weak pass by Bushman. Nonetheless, it'll force a third down for the Techman. And if I haven't said it already tonight, Carl, a very happy birthday to you, big fella. Thanks a lot, Jim. Finally made it to 18. I didn't think I'd make it this long. <laughs> Oh, there's a balloon up in the air for you. There you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I got a big happy birthday from the guys down in the production truck. Bill Rice and Associates down there bringing you the game. <laughs> oh, a little fancy movement in the backfield. McSwain's got the ball. They could lose some yards. If, and they do. They stop him deep in the backfield. They'll lose about seven on the play. Number 70 back there. Russ Cooper ran him down from behind. Chased him all the way back across the field and drug him down. Good play by 70, number 70, Russ Cooper. Well, here we'll see it. Bushman goes back to Bailey. Bailey to McSwain to the outside. You see number 60, and then there's number 70. Russ Cooper drags him down. So that'll bring up fourth down at 15, and Benson forced the punt. snap. Nobody coming in to block it. A low kick, and it bounces out of bounds act right about at the 47-yard line. A very low. high snap. Luckily for Benson, none of the Madison team was coming in to block. They were dropping back to set up a return. That was a low kick, a low line drive, just about six inches off the turf. Ace thought, the kicker for Benson, Matt Ace thought he was rushed. Because of the high snap, and he hurried, he didn't notice that he had all the time in the world to get that ball away. As Madison only sent in about three men. Again, Madison switching out of that wishbone, going to a pro set. Ooh, number 40 on the carry, plowed immediately by number 16, Tony Robertson. That was Brian Thomas on the carry for the Senators. And Ran right into number 16. Tony Robertson, the hard-hitting back for the Benson Techman. Bring up second down and nine from midfield. Play goes to Devin Pierce, and he gets only two on the play. Spun around there originally by number 75. That's Richard Poe, or excuse me, Matt Kulu. One of the big boys on the Benson team at 6'3", 235 pounds. Grabbed a handful of Mr. Pierce and spun him around. Biggest player out there on the field right now, Matt Kulu. Third down and six from the 48. Play goes to Pierce again and he stopped immediately. He ran into his own man. I think Benson Jim is beginning to key on number 31. And that'll bring up fourth down and short. Three yards to go. Go ahead. There you see number 29, Anthony Sherman, jogging onto the field. He's part of the punt return team for the Benson Techman. Younts will kick the football away on fourth down. Also back deep for the Techman is number 28, Tig McSwain. Snapping the kick. A high hanging kick. Fair catch called for. That, no. Taken at the 12 by Sherman and no gain. There's a flag on the play, Jim. I saw somebody raise his hand for a fair catch, and then the ball was tried to return. I think that might be the call. In the and I fair think catch. Anthony Sherman is injured, Carl. We'll wait and see what happens. I believe it might be his right leg. Have to wait and see what the penalty call is. And the Benson Techman cannot afford to lose Anthony Sherman in those wheels. This guy's once the guy 
We hear a little bit of the referee's discussion talking about one man signaling for a fair catch and the other man trying to return the football, which I think Jim is a no-no. We'll have to wait and see what they say. And the sidelines for the Madison Senators. They lead it 14 to 13 with 439 left to go in the third quarter. Jim Schobel and Carl Dieter bringing you the action on Multnomah Cable Access at Portland City Stadium. That was Ty McSwain, number 28. Both him and Sherman built about the same. And from up here, it's hard to read jersey numbers. We had a great catch signal given. And the penalty, I believe, is against Madison. There's the dead ball. Face mask penalty. For here. And a face mask penalty against the Senators saves the Benson Techman. A little timeout now is called by the Senators. A little mix-up there. We thought that the, the fair catch had been called in the backfield, and that's what one of the coaches for Madison is complaining about. 439 left on the PIL scoreboard. Madison 14, Benson 13. You don't have to sit in the classroom to go to college. Now there's a new and exciting way to earn college credits. College credit courses on television bring you a world of learning. You can work toward a college degree in your own home. It's convenient. You'll save time and money and still earn full college credit. Get ahead by watching television. Enroll now. Give yourself some credit. Civic Stadium, Jim Schobel and Carl Dietert, Madison leading 14 to 13, and one of the Madison coaches, I believe that's Greg Schubert who went out and conferred with the referees, he complained about one of the Benson running backs calling for the fair catch, but a face mask penalty saves the Techman. First down for the Techman, Bushman back to pass, and it's intercepted! Wow! What a catch by number 42, James Richardson. He reached up with one hand and pulled the ball down out of the air. And that will give Madison excellent field position. That's Benson's second turnover of the second half, or for the third quarter of that, for that matter. That was a great leaping catch by number 42. Jumped up with one hand, tipped the ball up in the air, and then caught it himself. Here we'll get another look at it. Or rather, that's not it. Schloss, look at he's got a receiver. That's number 88, Brad Yance across the middle, all the way down to the Benson 20-yard line. And that's good for another Madison first down. There's the interception, the tail end of it on your screen. Number 42, James Richardson leaping high into the air and grabbing that ball out of midair. Pass was intended for Matt Ace, nowhere close to that play. So Madison gets a break and the ball first and ten from the Benson 20-yard line. Play goes to Pierce to the outside and tackled down by Ace. Ace reached back and found saw number 31 and grabbed a handful of jersey since Pierce has been getting a lot of the ball carrying so far and there's a penalty flag on the play. Of a personal foul against Madison. That will cost them some costly penalties against the Senators tonight. But not resulting in any touchdowns for the Benson Techman. Fortunately for Madison. So a 15-yard penalty will be marched off against Madison, which will move them all the way back to the 32. Let's get the call from our referee. Personal foul. Offense. And that's what the call is, a personal foul. <laughs> I thought he might get a little more specific, but we'll take it. Inside four minutes to go. Madison still on top by a point, 14 to 13. Schloss 
That little halfback option play, and Pierce is stopped by number 72. That was George Runyon, and that Benson defense is beginning to key on Pierce. Well, I think Madison is going to the well one time too often here, giving the ball to Pierce, and Madison is just keying, or rather Benson is just keying on Pierce. So far, Madison hasn't done anything to change that, so now it's second and 24 from the Benson 34. And Madison going back to that wishbone. I believe that was Walter Bailey in on that play. Some kind of blitz, and it worked. I think you're right, Jim. I think that was a corner blitz. Bailey came in, and with the help of one of the Benson front linemen, drug Schloss down for a five-yard loss. Hey, that will bring up third down. There it is. Nine. Bailey wraps him up and throws him down. That Ace also in there on the play. There you see George Runyon running in there at the end of that play. Another quick kick. This time they were waiting for it, and McSwain gets it at his own 15. He's got some blockers, and he gets down to about his own 30. That's twice now we've seen Madison try that quick kick. The once it didn't work to their benefit, and this time Benson was waiting for it. That is strange how they run that play on third and long just to try to get the football deep in them, Benson's own territory. But McSwain was back ready for it, so Benson takes over first and ten from their own 30. Bushman for the Techman. Back, pitches back to Bailey. Bailey cutting to the outside, he's got a hole! And he gets a first down. Drug down there by number 66, Steve Jones. Bailey had a hole and he had two men to beat, and both men caught up with him and knocked him out of bounds. So another first down for the Techman. On that play, Walter Bailey saw it daylight. Two and a half minutes left to go. Madison still out on top. Bailey comes out for a couple plays rest here. Now it's Kenny Vaughn and Rod Hicks in the backfield. Bushman goes up to, to Kenny Vaughn. Vaughn, and Vaughn gets about five on the play with the penalty flag. Holding against the defense or rather the offense. And Kenny Vaughn seems to be battered up. And he's grabbing his left knee, and that is not a good sign. So a costly penalty against Benson will move them back. There you see the Benson sidelines looking on at an injured teammate. In the meantime, next week's game, it will be the Jefferson Democrats against Madison. In one of our games that we are not going to bring you from Civic Stadium, we'll bring it to you from Madison High School down on 82nd Way. And you watch that game a week from this Sunday night, October 25th at 7 p.m. on Channel 21. So, the injured Benson Techman off the field. We're back underway here. Bailey back in for Kenny Vaughn. First and 22. Pitch goes to Bailey. Bailey's got a blocker. What a block! What a block! There you see our cameraman, Gary Brewer, right there in the action. He always seems to have his nose in on the action. Oh, Rather, that's me, Brian, Brian Grubb. Grubb on the camera. I think he wants a taste of that. Usually we got Gary Brewer down there on the camera. Tonight it's Brian Grubb bringing you the action. Oh, well, he's got enough hair down there to pat his fall. <laughs> well, we got second down at 12 inside two minutes left in the third. It's been a long third quarter. Bushman pitches back. That is Anthony Sherman, number 29, and he just walks all over the defender. Gets about five. I believe that was number 13, Jason Armstrong. Bring up third down in about seven. Ball 
ball being spotted down at the 45-yard line. McSwain in motion. Pitch Push. goes back to Bailey. Three blockers, and Bailey saw the hole, and he's got a first down. He could be racing for the end zone, but the defensive man caught up with him. Devin Pierce, number 31, showing us that he can not only run the football, but he can tackle, too. Walter Bailey saw the hole, broke a tackle, and he would have been off to the end zone. Another first down for the Tackman. That's Benson's fifth first down of the evening. Madison with nine. So with one minute left to go, Benson striving and trying to get into the end zone before the third quarter ends. Bushman goes back to Bailey. Bailey's going to dump it into the end zone for Ace. Touchdown, Benson! Benson crowd, they're all over one another. Halfback option, Jim, pitch it back to Bailey. Give Ace just enough time to run his route and then hit him with the 26-yarder in the end zone. And that puts Benson back out on top, 19 to 14. There you see Bailey pitching it into the end zone. Ace right there for the score. I think Joe Bushman would like to have that one because <laughs> seeing as how he's got six already, I think he'll share a little of the wealth and give it to Bailey this time. If I'm not mistaken, that's Bailey's second touchdown pass. And the cheerleaders seem to be doing some kind of push-up. They might be down there a while, Jim. The Benson Techman have called a timeout. <laughs> I don't know if they're aware of that fact. There you see the Benson sidelines. Happy about that option play that is very successful. So Madison, will, or rather Benson, will try for the extra point. This could put them ahead by five points. And they will try and go for the two-pointer. Earlier, Benson had one of their extra points blocked. Right now, they're going to try and get it back. Bushman rolls out, and it's blocked. He gets the football back. He's going to run, pitches it in. They got it! They got it! What a play! My, oh, my! A little razzle-dazzle. Bushman went to throw it. It was blocked. He was swatted right back in his face. Alertly picked the ball out of midair was still behind the line of scrimmage and threw it to Rod Hicks. Rolled out and Hicks was wide open in the end zone. What a play. And Benson leads it 21 to 14. Madison doesn't know what hit him right there. They thought they had the play here. Here it is. We didn't get to see the beginning, but there's Hicks. I think he wanted to spike that one, Carl. He's wide open in the end zone. I mean... He got a camp there and had a tea party. So with 42 seconds left on the PIL scoreboard, Benson with the lead now, 21 to 14. And this game will go down to the wire. There you see number 32, Rod Hicks, and number 10, Matt Ace. He's the man of the hour right now, along with Walter Bailey. He's the one that caught that 26-yard pass from Walter Bailey to tie this ball game up with a little help from the two-point conversion. Long kick all the way back, taken at the four by 31, Devin Pierce. Right up the middle. He had a hole, and Pierce gets out to about the 34-yard line. And a penalty flag is down. Oh, wow. Guy Nelson is down. He just dropped like a tree. Not quite sure what happened. We'll have to wait and see what the referees call. Or rather, that's number 80, Ian Roach. Ian Roach is beside himself. I believe that call is going to be against Roach. We can see what the call is. It happened pretty much right where the ball was down. Here's the call. Personal foul against the Techman. 
I believe, that cost him 15 yards. I think Ian Roach tried to block with the front part of his helmet a spear or something. So that'll give Madison an extra 15 yards. That'll take them all the way across midfield. Inside into Benson territory. Not quite. Well, not quite. They'll spot the ball at the 49. Here's the call. Got a dead ball. Personal foul. Over here. First down. Hold the ball. Hold the ball. Hold the ball. So with 36 seconds left in the third quarter, this third quarter seems like it has lasted forever. But right now we're down to the last 30 seconds. Hand off to Pierce, I think that was. The play went up the middle. Let's wait till they unpile there in the middle. No, the ball carrier was number 42, James Richardson. He got about three, call it second down, call it two, make it second down and eight. There you see the clock ticking down the last 10 seconds of the third quarter. I don't think they'll get the playoff before the clock expires, and they won't. So a big play here in the third quarter. 26 yards from Walter Bailey to Matt Ace. One quarter of action left on the PIL scoreboard. Benson 21, Madison 14. One quarter of action left to go in the PIL Civil War. It's Benson 21 and Madison 14. You see a mad hatter down there on the Madison sidelines, and that's exactly what this game has been. Mad, mad, mad. It's 21 to 14 right now. Benson so far out on top. Madison will get the ball to start the fourth quarter. With the football, number 12, the quarterback, Bill Schloss, and he goes down. Matt Ace on the tackle. And I think the key to this second half has been the Benson defense. It's been the story all season long with Benson. It's been the defense. Well, they held him scoreless that last quarter, Jim. Early in the ball game, at the start of the, tonight's game, it was all Madison on the ground in, in, the, in the way of Devin Pierce. But the defense has been keying in on Pierce, and Madison really hasn't been able to do anything with the football. Well, Jim, I think, like I said earlier, Ma uh, Madison's been going to the well once too often, and Benson started to key on Pierce. They're going to have to go to another runner. There's Pierce again, and they're not running that wishbone like they did. On, They've gone, decided to go to a pro set. I don't understand why. Maybe, they, maybe the, head, the coaching staff of the Senators feels that the wishbone has served its purpose. Obviously, the, the pro set hasn't hurt them. There was another first down right there for Madison. Their tenth of the evening. There they switch out of the wishbone again to a pro set. Playing on to the up man. And Richardson gets twisted like a pretzel. But not after. <laughs> The boys in the truck are having fun with that sound effects tape now. Yeah, but twisted like a pretzel, but not after a gain of four yards. The, the, the guys down in the truck have a nickname for us. They call us the Princes of Pun. Kenny Vaughn back in the ball game. Rod Hicks coming out for Benson. The new quarterback, Randy Baker for Madison. Baker takes it himself and he is brought down by a pile led by Kenny Vaughn down at the bottom of that pile. He gets out to about the 30 yard line, make it the 29. A little help there from Tony Robertson, number 16 and number 73, Byron Spires. Sloss back in. Yeah, there you see Bill Sloss coming back in near the play rest or so. Third down and two from the Benson 29-yard line. Madison on the move here to open the fourth quarter of action. 
play goes to Devin Pierce, and he is knocked out of bounds and knocked back in. At about the 23-yard line. That's, That's good enough for it. another Madison first down. They trail 21-14. to 14. They need a touchdown here to get back into this ballgame. First and 10 at the Benson 23. Back to the wishbone offense for Madison. No, they switch out of it. And the Benson defense readjusts. Play goes up the middle. Gain of maybe two or three. See him unpiling those players there at the bottom. I think that was number 42 Richardson on the carry again. Terry Patton goes to the sidelines. 9.05 left to go in the fourth quarter. It's Benson 21, Madison 14. Play going up the middle again. Richardson again on the carry. There you see something that Bill Dressel said. The Benson coach about the Madison team. Madison is not a shifty team. They're not crafty. They run a wishbone, and that means they're going to run the ball right at you every time. They'll go outside every so often, but most of the time it's going to be right up the middle. Kind of a stop-me-if-you-can football plan. And that keeps the linebackers busy all night. Play goes back up the middle again, and Benson run it. Benson beginning to stop up those holes. Richardson again on the carry. Willie Pardo on the stop for the Techman, number 52. Fourth down and about four now. An interesting call. Watch the ball! Let's see what the Madison Senators will do. 17 yards from the end zone. A field goal right now would be about 30 yards. They are four yards shy, and they will try and go for it. Stacking everybody up on the line. Seven down linemen and three backs. And it gets sacked! Madison doesn't get it! What a play! Number 16, Tony Robertson read the play. So, Madison will turn the ball over on downs. Thanks a lot, guys. And another happy birthday wish going to you, Carl. So, as I said, Madison stopped on their fourth and four effort. Benson will take over on downs. First and ten from their own 20-yard line. Madison tried on fourth and four to no avail. That option to the outside never really got going for the Tech, or rather for the Senators, and the Techman stopped them. Bushman goes up the middle. That is Rod Hicks, number 32, out to his own 30-yard line, and good for another Benson first down. About a yard short, Jim. I think they're going to short him a yard where his knees hit. Call it second and one from the 28. His knees hit at about the 29-yard line. They'll spot the ball at the 28, though. Bushman on second and two. Goes to Bailey, and he gets the first down, and more, out to the 37-yard line. And Madison calls a timeout. Both teams now with one timeout left. Could prove to be costly later in the game, Jim. We'll have to see what happens. Bill Dressel out. And there you see our schedule for next week. We will be at Madison High School. And from the looks of things right now, with Madison down by seven, Madison could very well get back into this ball game and be 6-0 and or be 5-1. and But they will take on the Jefferson Democrats next week. And you notice that change in the starting time on Sunday next week. It will be at 7 p.m. instead of 10 p.m. Right here on Multnomah Cable Access. The PIL Game of the Week. Jim Shovel and Carl Dieter, we bring the games to you every week. 
weather that changed that. There was an error on the time. It will be again at 10 p.m. on Channel 21, as always. Mondays at 2.30 on Channel 11. And Tuesday edition at 6 p.m. Pardon me, Carl. That would be for the East Portland <laughs> viewers only. And mouth's running a little dry. This game has been exciting from the beginning. Bushman on first down for the Techman. Pitches back to Walter Bailey. He's got a blocker. He cuts to the outside. He could be off. And he's knocked down inside the 40-yard line. Drug down by number 77, Mark Heron. But not after a very long game. And another first down for the Techman. From his own 38 all the way down to the other 38. And Bailey is one pumped up young man. He's going to run off the field for a set of downs. Him and McSwain will come off for a set. Take a little breather. That'll leave number 32 and number 44, Rod Hicks and Ken Vaughn, respectively, in the backfield for the Benson Techman. First and 10 from the Madison 38. Bushman goes to Vaughn up the middle, and he is close to another first down, about two yards shy. There you see Kenny Vaughn. He's been carrying a lot of the load. Here is a look at that run by Walter Bailey. Hicks out there blocking. And like I said, Hicks is a great blocker. There's number 77 grabbing him from behind. When you need the block to the outside, it's either going to be Ace A or Hicks for Benson. So Benson's got it second and three from the 31-yard line of the Senators. Madison's going to have to stop them here or find themselves in a deep hole with only five and a half minutes left here. In the Bushman fourth goes to Bailey. Bailey runs into his own man and is brought down. Loses about a yard. There you see Bailey. Devin Pierce on the tackle for the Senators. Five and a half minutes left to go. Benson out on top, 21 to 14. Ben, Walter Bailey rather puffing at Pan. They're a little tired. I thought he was going to come out for a series, but he only came out for one play, probably to get the play in from the sidelines for the Techman. So Third down and two at the 30. Five minutes left. Play goes to Bailey, and he gets the first down, but a penalty flag. The location was thrown, Jim. I think that would have to be a holding call. We'll wait and see what the referee says. I believe that might be against Madison, too, Carl. We'll see what the call is. Here it is. It's against Benson. And the Benson fans do not agree with that call whatsoever. So rather having it third down and two, the Benson Techman will have third down and 17 from the 40. The holding penalty, offense. Rather it'll be third down and 13 from the 40. Holding is a call against Benson. That's their third penalty, Benson rather, that's their third penalty of the second half. 35 yards. Joe Bushman on third down for the Benson Techman. Pitches back. Bailey razzle-dazzle in the backfield. No, it's a fake. Bailey to the outside, and the ball is stripped out of bounds. Luckily for Bailey, lost the ball, but it rolled out of bounds before the Madison Senators could jump on it. Bailey got down to the 33-yard line. Still going to be a fourth and three. Fourth and about five, rather. Excuse me, Jim. Fourth and five. And the Techman will go for it on fourth down. So Bushman on fourth and five. Bushman goes to Bailey to the outside. He cuts up the middle and he's going to be close. I don't think he made it. He is going to be close. They give it to him. No, I think he's going to be a yard short, Jim. Yep, you're right, Carl. He is. Bailey Bailey. got up thinking that they were going to give it to him, and they didn't. There you see Bailey, a little dejected. So with 4.20 left to go, Madison will have another shot to tie it up. Four minutes to go 70 yards, Jim. Plenty of time. 
Back to the wishbone set. Back to pass. And he's dropped down in the backfield. George Runyon, number 72. In there quickly. Sloss with no time at all to throw the football. And it has been this Benson defense touted with some costly mistakes from Madison that has got them back in this ball game. Loss of seven takes them all the way back to their own 24. Rather, a loss of six takes it back to their own 24. Call it second and 16. And time beginning to be of the essence and Madison moving the ball the wrong way. Out of the wishbone set into a pro set, eye formation. Back to pass again. Looking deep and it's going to be intercepted by McSwain. McSwain runs it and gets out of bounds at his 35. Run it at the Madison 35. That's Madison's third turnover of the ball game. Coming at a, couldn't have come at a worse time for the Senators. Just over three minutes left, down by a touchdown, and they give the ball away. So with 3.18 left to go, Benson will get the ball back at the Madison 35-yard line, much to the delight of the Benson crowd here at Portland Civic Stadium. Here's the play once again. Schloss goes to throw, and it's a weak throw. Brown and McSwain are there, and McSwain brings it in for the Techman. McSwain on that play, the higher jumper of the two. Bushman on first down goes to Walter Bailey again, and Bailey sees a hole and gets about seven and a half yards on the carry. Number 70 on the tackle, that's Russ Cooper. He's been dragging a lot of that Walter Bailey around. <laughs> Call it second down and two, gain of eight on the play. Walter Bailey all over the place tonight. He's thrown for a touchdown. Bushman back to Bailey again, and Bailey is going to be munched and brought down at the 25, but I think he's going to be close to another Techman first down. Doing a lot of fancy hip-hopping around the line there. bring the chains out and see if Bailey is close. Very close, I think, Jim. If not a first down, he's right on the line. I think they will give it to him from the looks of things from up here. So you see the ball spotted right on the 25. Pull the chain tight and let's see how close Walter got. About two inches. There you see it. And a nice shot from Brian Grubb, our cameraman, down on the field. What a shot. You saw it about two inches short. The scoreboard's going to say a yard, but believe me, folks, he couldn't be any more than six inches shy. Bring up a third and a very short one. <laughs> we'll probably see a quarterback sneak here. If not, they'll probably, my money's going to go they, on Walter Bailey again. There you see Joe Bushman, number four. Benson waiting for the call from the sidelines. left to go in county. Bushman's got the signal he's given the play to the team. Both teams with a timeout left. And the Techman took too much time. That'll cost him a costly penalty too. So instead of third and inches, it'll be third down and six. Sure, Coach Bill Dressel can't be happy with that. A dead ball, delay, offense. So it's under two minutes, 159 left. The Madison Senators are going to have to force something and something quick. 
uh, their undefeated record, unblemished record, will all of a sudden falter. Joe Bushman at the line. Barking out the signals. Pitches back. That's Bailey. And Bailey is brought down in the backfield. He'll lose a lot of yards on that play, Jim. All the way back to about the 36. Number 43 in there for Madison. Joe Coolsley. Or rather, John Coolsley. Madison will call their last time out of the ball game with 150 left in the quarter. Remember... If Madison should tie this ball game up within the last minute and 50 seconds, we will go to the Kansas plan. And what that is, if you don't know what that is, each team gets a set of four downs from the 10-yard line. Should one team score, the other team has a shot to get it in. If they don't, they walk away losing. If they score and tie it up, we just keep on going. Timeout called on the field by Madison, hoping to force Benson into giving them the ball back without losing any time off the clock. A minute 50 left to go here in the fourth quarter. So far, turnovers in the ball game. Madison with three and Benson with two. Benson with seven first downs and Madison with 11. Correction, Jim Benson has three turnovers, two of those in the second half, though. And there you see the score on the PIL scoreboard. Benson, the home team, leading 21-14. to They've got the ball, but it is fourth and 11 from the 36. They're going to have to give it up or go for the first down. They can't kick field goals from this kind of distance. I'd be about a 50-yarder, so they're going to go for it. Fourth and 11. Bushman on fourth down. Reverse to Robertson. To the outside. He's going to cut to the outside. He's got nobody in front of him. He's going to march to the end zone. Benson challenged the Madison defense and won the challenge. And like you said, Jim, that's basically the nail in the coffin. Here we go. We'll get another look at this on 4th and 11. To reverse to Robertson. He gets outside. Everybody was going the wrong way. He beats him to the corner. Makes a little cut to the middle right there. And bingo. Into the end zone. Watch this little dance that he does. <laughs> And the extra point is good, and it's 28 to 14. There you see the score. The PIL scoreboard is Benson 28, Madison 14. A little under two minutes left to go, and we'll be right back. You're watching the PIL game of the week on both on the cable access. All right. All right. Hey, Keith, come on. Gotta go. See you later. So what's up? Not much. Thought you had a job. No, I told him I saw it. So come back to school. It's too late. It's not too late. Look, I know this guy who had trouble reading. Dropped out in the eighth grade. Came back 20 years later. Who is that? Hey, Tom, come on. Get a move on. My dad. Look, if he can do it, you can do it. Find out about getting your GED today. We're back here at Civic Stadium. The kickoff rolls untouched into the end zone, so Madison will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. 139 in county left to go in the fourth quarter. They say the game isn't over until the fat lady starts singing, and I believe the fat lady is singing on the sidelines for the Benson Techman. Uh, at least she's warming up those vocal cords, Jim. <laughs> Madison needs two touchdowns in under a minute and 30 seconds. Madison's going to go to a hurry-up offense. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Down 28 to 14. Back to pass. Schloss. And he's going to get And he's going to get munched down at the 18-yard line. Loss of only two yards, but the clock is moving. And Madison doesn't have any timeouts left to stop it. Guy Nelson in there on the sack. 
costly time wasted right there. The Madison team went back into the huddle, and they don't have any timeouts or any time. Lost back. Pitches back to Devin Pierce. Pierce to the sidelines and dives at about his 28-yard line. Surprised he didn't go for the out-of-bounds marker. Jimmy had it there. Under a minute left to go. The clock's still moving. 55 and counting left on the ticker. Our tickers are going to be in bad shape when we get done with this game, Jim. Well, you're still young. Your heart is still in good condition. 40 seconds left to go. Pitch back to Pierce. He's going to cough it up. Throws, and it's off the shoulder pad of Guy Nelson. Guy Nelson out there in pursuit of Bill Schloss. And the clock stops with 33 seconds left to go. And Madison on fourth down and three. Well, nothing left to do but go for it. You're down 14 points. Why give the ball back? And some coaches from Jefferson High School in scouting tonight's game. Madison will drop to 5-1 and one in the PIL, and Benson will go to 6-0. and oh. The bag run here at Chanavantu State by the Benson Long Ballers. Long bomb. He got a man open. That's number 84 for Madison, Terry Patton. All the way out to midfield where the clock will stop. But, Jim, I think it's a little too little, a little too late. 26 seconds left. All the way down to midfield. Madison could not get anything going here in the second half. Betson's defense keyed in. And there you see some of the players on the sidelines rejoicing. Oh, what a sack in the backfield by number 69. That is Robert Hunt. What a hit by Robert. He just got in there and slammed Bill Schloss to the turf. And right now, the man of the hour has got to be Matt Ace. His touchdown turned the tide for Benson. Here you hear the crowd counting down. Three. Rather, they stopped the clock. An incomplete pass. So the crowd will have to wait till the referee blows his whistle to count down these last four seconds. Sorry to interrupt you there, Jim. <laughs> As you were saying, Matt Ace. So far, he, he broke the game open with that touchdown in the third quarter. That with a two-point conversion. Put. And Dave Allen and Cal Frank will have an interview. We'll see if we can't get number 10, Matt Ace. And maybe Walter Bailey, the one who threw the pass. One second is left on the clock. One second is left on the clock. It's not over yet. And I think the fat lady is going to start singing here for Benson. See if we can get, like we said, Jim, Matt Ace and Walter Bailey, the one who, the two who connected on that touchdown in the third quarter to break the game open for Benson. So this will be the final play of the game. Benson will go on to win 28-14. to Lost back to pass. It's complete. Oh, a little fake play. Richardson. And that's the ball game. the ball game. The Benson Techman remain undefeated at 6-0. and And they win the PIL Civil War. And the Benson crowd and the players all over the place here at Civic Stadium. It was a seesaw battle back and forth. The final score on the PIL scoreboard. The Benson Techman 28 and the Madison Senators 14. Well, Jim, we said it'd be a war and that it was. Benson not breaking the game open until that 26-yard pass from Walter Bailey to Matt Ace and the two-point conversion to put them ahead 21-14 to and basically the game out of reach. And they added another touchdown in the fourth quarter. It was 14-13 to at halftime. So Benson goes on to win in a thriller here from Civic Stadium. So after six weeks of football with three weeks left, Benson goes undefeated at 6-0, and but through 20 quarters of scoreless football from their opponents, they finally give up a touchdown, but they go to 6-0 and on the season and in the PIL, and Madison drops to 5-1. Cal Frank and Dave Allen are standing by. We're going to see if they can't talk with 
Matt Ace and Walter Bailey. Once again, the final score, Matt, Madison 14, Benson 28. And the winning, and the winning players of tonight's game, 28 to 14. Congratulations, Mr. Walter Bailey, today. All right, thank you. It's been a long time coming. I've been waiting since last year when I was injured to play in this game, and the Lord blessed me with good health. And today we just did it, and I'm just very thankful that we did. It was really fun out there, hard-hitting ball game, and now it's over, and I'm just ready. I'm ready to relax because it's behind me now. All right, well, take a good relax. We'll talk to uh, Matt Ace over here, number 10. How did you have the game feel to you tonight? Obviously, you're excited. We're a little. Uh, Nervous, I think, at first, and uh, we went in at halftime, had a little talk, and we decided we were going to come out and, you know, start playing with emotion and, you know, trying to think back of what happened last two years. And, uh, you know. Are we looking at a title here again this year, do you think? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I can say for sure, but more than likely it'll be. All right, well, you're on your way. 6-0. and Have you got your coach around here somewhere? Coach Dressel. 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 Coach Dressel is right over here. We're going to get to his reaction of tonight's game. Congratulations, Coach Dressel. 6 0, the winning coach. Feel about you're obviously excited about tonight's game. I uh, am excited about it. That was, that's, uh, <laughs> sums it up pretty well. It's a crazy game when you uh, score two touchdowns before your offense runs a play and then you have to scramble to win. So if you ever get this game figured out, uh, write a book and make some money on it. All right, you have three more games in the regular season. Is it possible that it could be you and Madison in the uh, playoffs? Uh, possibly Madison, us, and two others. We get four playoff teams in the, in the PIL. So. Uh, if if we can continue to win, we can go as one. They they go as two. That's what you know happened to us last year when we lost to them. We continued to win and, and win as a second place team, and and uh, they win as the uh, first place team. So I would think that both of us are going to be in the playoffs for sure. Right? I'd, a, I'd ask you how it's going to be for next week, but let's let you savor a victory for tonight. It was a good right. ball game, okay. excellent ball game. Right. Thank you very much. Congratulations again, Coach Russell yeah. and uh, Matt AC, number ten. AC, number ten. All right, there you have it, 24, 28 to 14. Let's just take it back up to Jim Schobel and Carl Dieter for the wrap-up of tonight's game. All right, thank you very much, Dave Allen and the Benson Techman victorious tonight. Their record goes to 6-0, and and the Madison Senators drop to 5-1 and in the PIL. <clears throat> there you see the final score on the PIL scoreboard tonight. Next week's game will bring you the Jefferson Democrats against the Madison Senators from Madison High School in another exciting PIL game of the week. There you see it on your screen. You can watch that game Sunday the 25th on Channel 21.